name is Abby and welcome to this video all about supporting learners with learning difficulties and disabilities. We're going to be looking at a range of resources that can be utilized for students with physical disabilities and students that may be uh, nonverbal or have limited verbal language. And we're also going to be looking at visuals and supports that can be used. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to be looking at some resources that can be recorded on. So I have here, this is called a big point. And a big point is a button that has a clear case and can be recorded on. There are also other devices too. So there's the Big Mac communicator, which is similar. So with this big point here, you can take the case off and you can insert pictures, okay? So say for instance, I was going to be using this with a student and I wanted them to be able to communicate yes and no. I can put the no in there, click that shut. Then I can record my voice on the back here. I can click record. No. And then select play. No. All right, and then it says the command. Now, you may use this for a student so that they can communicate yes or no. It may be something that sits on their tray on their wheelchair, for instance, or you might use it for other reasons. So you may uh, want to put activity instructions on here. So say you have an activity set up, you've given the students verbal instructions, and there may be a student that has difficulties remembering these instructions. So you may like to record the instructions on this button as well. And so then when the student goes to do the activity, they can press the button and then it will indicate for them what it is that they need to do. You may want to use it uh, so students can communicate that they're wanting to go outside. So say for instance you had a student with limited verbal communication or a student who was non-verbal and they absconded from the classroom and you were wanting them to be able to uh, communicate more effectively how they were wanting to, or if they were wanting to leave the classroom setting. So you could mount this button here by the door and it could say go outside on it and then you could record your voice saying, I want to go outside and the student presses it when they're wanting to go outside and then you can have a conversation with them about that. So there's some examples of ways that you can be using these types of buttons that can be recorded on. Further to that, uh, if you're wanting to use this with parents and students, you can use it as a diary. So you can perhaps put in the student's name and then the card that says diary. And you might like to send this home with a student as a communication method. So what you can do is you can record on there uh, what things the student did during the day, if there's any particular messages, and then the parent can record. They might say, you know, on the weekend I went to the zoo or whatever it is that they did. And so that way it's a way to be able to document information and share it between parents and school. So next we're going to be having a look at switch devices. Okay, so there are a range of different switches that you can use. So a switch enables a student with a physical disability to be able to access equipment and resources that other students are accessing. So this switch here is a smaller switch. There's also larger ones here. And these are called jelly bean switches. Now, like the big point, you can take this top part off here. And in here, you can take this section off and you can insert um, pictures if you're wanting to. Now, this whole part here has come off. What you can do is you can change the... Um, amount of touch that's required for this um, button to work. So if you have a student that has limited physical movement and isn't able to apply as much pressure, you can adapt this so that less pressure is required. Okay, so there's a smaller one and a larger one also depending on the needs of the student. So this switch here can be inserted and used with different toys and games. You may be using the switches with students for them to be able to learn about cause and effect. When I press this switch, something happens. So this is a fan here. And so press the switch and the fan operates. Let go of the switch 
and the fan stops working. Okay, so there's that cause and effect. There's a whole range of things that um, are switch adapted that you can be using with students. So this here is a switch adapted bubble machine. And so you press the switch and it makes the bubbles go. Okay, let go of the switch, the bubbles stop. Great way to teach students cause and effect. Okay, so you may also have switch adapted scissors um, or you may have other switch adapted toys that you're using with students. Now you can also uh, use switch adapted power boards. So we have one here. So say for instance, you had a cooking class that you were uh, involving the students in. And so what I can do is I can get my switch here and I can plug it in. Okay. There, that is connected with our power board here. Okay, and so when I press the switch, it operates the blender. Press the switch again and it turns off. So students are able to be involved in that way. So pretty much any app, uh, appliance or equipment that can be plugged in can be then turned into something that is switch adapted. So students with physical disabilities are able to access it and use it as well. Something else that can be switch adapted is a mouse. Now this means that you're able to make activities on the computer accessible for students with physical disabilities. So this mouse here has been switch adapted on both sides. So a switch can be plugged into the left or the right hand side to operate the different parts of the mouse. So I'm going to plug mine into the left hand mouse click. And this would mean that the student, when they press this switch here, it's like a click on the computer screen. So this can be used in uh, talking books. So you might have PowerPoint presentation set up with narration on there with different pictures from the story. And each time the student presses the switch, it turns the page for them. There are different activities and songs and games that also can be accessed uh, using switches on the computer. So Priory Woods is a great example of this and they have a range of learning activities that can be used. So there are also switches that can be used with students so that they can access the iPad. Now I have here, this is a Bluetooth switch, which can mean that students are able to access the iPad and they're able to scan through the different apps that are on there. They can select apps and then they can also interact with them. And so you can modify the accessibility options and enable a switch. Now I have this switch here that it is turned on and it's connecting in via Bluetooth. I'm going to show two apps that can be used with the switch. So there are apps that are available that are specifically designed to use with switches. Now with this switch here, you can actually add in the jelly bean switches. So if the student doesn't have the dexterity to be able to push down on that, they can then access it via the jelly bean switch. So we've got two switches, switch one and switch two. Now we're going to have a look at the Mazes app. Okay, and so this one here moves the car forward. This one here moves it down. Okay, so I can change the direction. And this is a great way for and this is a great way for students to learn how to use the switches. Okay. All right, so we have a, another app here. And it is the sensory room app. So under settings, I'm going to select enable switch. Okay, it says one switch, so we can just use one of the switches. And then I'm going to play. 
Okay, so to play this video, I'm going to push on the switch. And then to continue on, the switch is pushed again. Okay, and this takes the student through a series of things in the sensory room. So they're two examples of apps that can be used with these switches. And then also the Bluetooth switch can enable the iPad to be accessed using switch access if the student isn't able to use the iPad with their hands. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the alternate spinner. So this can be used if you're wanting to do counting activities with students or you're wanting students to be able to use dice. Now if you're just wanting one die you can take this ring off and then you can simply press the button here and that will spin it. Now you can also add in the jelly bean switch once again if students are using that to access. So we have our one die and then if you're wanting to add in two you can insert this front cover on and so then students have got two dice here and then you can talk about the numbers and what answer that they have. Now the alternate spinner also comes with templates so if you're wanting to create a different template to use with the spinner you can and then you can make it on this ring here which can be put onto the spinner. So on the website, there are a range of different templates that you can use. So maybe you're wanting the student to be able to choose an activity. Maybe you're wanting them to have a look at different types of weather. Whatever it is, you can create different templates to use with this spinner. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the ABC flip chart. Now an ABC flip chart can be used with students that have no verbal language and it is a way to be able to, um, for these students to be able to write in a meaningful way. So this is our ABC flip chart and this can be used with learners when writing. So what you do is you go through here and you go, okay, we're going to be writing about and you might choose a particular theme that you've been looking at in the classroom. You might choose um, a photo of the student. So you might hold up two photos and get the student to look at which photo that they're going to write about. You can, talk, you can use a range of writing methods. Okay, and so then say you have your topic that the student is going to write about. Then you're going to model. So we've got the sounds at burkert.et, okay? And so you ask the student, okay, we're going to be writing about this photo of when you went swimming. Okay, have a think about what you would like to write. So would you like a sound from this page at burkert.et? And then you say yes or no. Okay, and you can hold up your yes and no visuals. Oh, you're looking at yes, you're telling me yes, you would like one of these sounds. Okay, then you can go through them individually. Would you like an app? Yes or no? Ah, oh, yes, you would like an app. Okay, you're looking at yes, you're telling me yes, you do want one. So then we're going to record it on here. Okay, so that's the first letter. And then you can go along and you can say, would you like to turn the page? Would you like to add a space? Not what you meant or finish, okay? And you're asking those questions at the end of each sound. Now, you can continue on, okay? And so the student goes through and selects different sounds. Now there's the option there for them to add spaces. Now, if they are putting together different sounds and it's not making a lot of sense to you, that is okay. That is what emergent writers are doing and they're exploring with different sounds and symbols. Now, over time, the research has shown that students are able to develop um, the patterns. And so you may see from a random assortment of letters into them starting to group them and it might be based on the size of the letter. So say they were writing, you know, they were thinking about writing and they might put a but in there at the end of it, okay? And so you can start to see some patterns. So with continual practice and reinforcing these concepts, there have been some excellent outcomes from students being able to write using the ABC flip chart. Okay, so it's got here 
the different parts of the alphabet and you continue on through. So start is your sound, is the sound that you're wanting? K, l, m, n, or o, yes or no. And then if it's no, then you continue to the next one. Okay, if it's yes, then that's when you go through them individually. Is it kicking k, yes or no? No, oh, is it l, yes or no? Oh, no, and then you continue on. So that is our ABC flip charts. Now, there are some other resources that can be used with students to monitor their engagement and to increase their motivation. So here we have a timer. Now, timers are really helpful to use with students so that you can indicate the length of time that they have to finish an activity or task. So say, you know, they're doing a maths task and you can see them getting agitated or uh, it's something that is not a preferred task for them, you can say, look, we've only got 10 more minutes of maths left. Okay, and then they can see here has that visual representation of the countdown timer. Now you may have a student um, that has items that they've worked for or that they're using uh, as a motivator. And so you might say, okay, you have five minutes to play with the trains okay and then you can put the timer on and they can see and then you can preempt help them preempt when it is nearing the end and you say oh just one more minute left so they're getting that warning now there also are timers that are available um, as watches and also uh, on the ipad too and then there's also websites that have timers on them Okay, so another resource that can be used are visual schedules. Now visual schedules are helpful for, for breaking down tasks for students so they know the sequence that they have and how many things that they're required to do. They can have that visual representation of, oh, this is what I've got now, what's coming up and what's following on. So this particular one is a piece of cardboard which has been folded in half with a uh, Velcro strip on it and it has a box in the middle and it has a finished sign on it So once the student has completed that particular task, they put it in the side here into the finish box There are a range of different visual schedules. This one here is an A4 one. They complete the activity Then it goes into the finish column. You might have a class visual schedule or you might have individual ones or you might have both you could use them with checklists or you can have them with the pictures and where the student physically moves them across. So they're our visual schedules. So that is the end of our presentation about some of the resources that can be used with students with disabilities and or learning difficulties. Thank you very much for watching.